Today I like to do a demonstration on trimming this ball. This size is around uh, six inches wide. And uh, before I trim, the uh, weight of uh, this ball is two pounds and uh, zero two ounces. It's approximately two pounds of uh, clay. Right, and uh, I will weigh it after I trim it, so uh, you know how much clay I remove from the trimming. And then I'm also like to talk a little bit about my trimming tools. The shin tools. Uh, I will use the uh, ruler to measure the the thickness before I trim. Okay, so this is the the ruler. Uh, I will use uh, three pieces and to demonstration on how to use the ruler to get exactly how thick the pattern is. And then um, I will use my trimming tool to do the demonstration. Mostly, uh, I will use just uh, maybe two pieces of the tool to trim. Uh, it's number three and number two. Uh, this, this is my carbide tool. It's the uh, blade made out of a uh, uh, tungsten carbide. And uh, this is my original uh, trimming tool that is made out of uh, stainless steel. And they are pretty much the same. It's just that the uh, carbide lasts much, much longer for the uh, very sharp edge. And for the uh, uh, stainless steel trimming tool, uh, you need to resharpen it uh, often. And uh, in case you are uh, uh, wondering how uh, I make my tool, originally I was using the hacksaw blade. This is a hacksaw blade. And uh, I just, uh, it's about this long, and I just break it into two pieces, and then I use the torch to heat it up, and then make it into a L shape and then sharpen it. So that's, that was my original tool that I, uh, I made it a long time ago. And I have a video showing how to do that. Uh, watch my number of, uh, seven, okay? Type in my name and the number seven, it will pop out the, uh, how to make the trimming tool out of a hacksaw blade, okay? So that is my original. And then uh, uh, my tool start to evolve from stainless steel and then now it's tungsten carbide okay so that's my tool and then uh, a very uh, final uh, trimming that if you don't want to turn it upside down and get to the uh, edge I will show you how to use this tool okay this is also my invention and I will show you how to do that right so let's start it First, you want to know exactly how thick the button is. So this is my also my invention. It's the ruler that you check it. You check the uh, the depth from uh, the top of the uh, ruler to the center. Okay, so you are going to insert one ruler here, right? And uh, if you have only two pieces, okay, some people buy two pieces, some people buy three pieces. If you have only two pieces, you can pull it out and then you measure right here. Okay, so from the top of the ruler to the wheel head and from top of the ruler to the uh, center, you subtract the difference and you know exactly how thick the bottom is. Okay, so that's my uh, ruler for that purpose. So let's check it. This one is uh, for the inside is 88 and for the outside is uh, 103. 103, 88, so it comes to 15, okay? So 103 minus 88 is well, 15 millimeters. All right. So now I know exactly how thick the bottom is. And um, when I'm trimming, I will keep on checking until I hit. Usually I leave uh, the bottom part. Okay? 
uh, maybe within three to four millimeters okay that's my goal and then uh, start from there i would start to remove the clay from the outside okay so i will do the demonstration showing you how to do that right so six inches of a ball on center and usually i do a tap centering so i have my right hand here hold it on the side of the ball and then use my left hand start to tap it okay and you have to tap on the spot that is off okay and i have a, a video demonstration on how to learn the tap centering so you can refer to my uh, previous video. Just type in my name on the tap centering. So it, it should uh, pop out. Okay. So that's the uh, tap centering. And if you don't know how to tap center, that's fine too. Uh, just get a piece of a sharp uh, tool and then you steadily uh, approach to it and find a very steady spot. Steadily approach it until you can make a mark and if your pieces is not in the center, you will see the mark on one side and the other you, on the other side, you don't have it, okay? So you push that, uh, that direction when you have a mark, push it into the center. So by doing so, you will be able to find your center slowly, but uh, uh, it's not, not that difficult to find your center, okay? So for tap centering, just tap, 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 and use my right hand to hold it so that the piece doesn't fly away okay that's good and then after that you will just use that clay to hold it down usually i uh, use four pieces of a clay to do that okay so first i will just roughly anchor it and make sure that when you are pushing down your coil, hold down the part so that you don't push it away by accident. Okay. And then after that, you want to secure a little bit more. So push your coil, uh, push your clay firmly to hold down your part. All right. So part is secure there right and uh, if you're clay usually you want to wait till uh, the right stage to trim and uh, when you rub your fingers on the surface if you feel like sticky okay that's too wet okay just no rush wait till it gets to the right time to trim it okay so now it's very really smooth and the clay is not sticking so that's good this part here might be a little bit wet, okay? a little bit wet here on um, the bottom. So uh, if your part is too wet and you still want to trim, the best way to do the trimming is using the uh, looping tool. Okay? Use the looping tool. It's easier. For using my uh, L-shaped tool, carbide tool or uh, stainless steel tool, uh, you might want to trim it at the uh, data hard stage, okay? A little bit harder stage. That will be easier. Okay, so like I told you that I'm going to use two of my trimming tool to do the demonstration. And one is number three, one is number two. Uh, for using number three, I will use that to remove most of the clay. And then for getting the corner right, I'm using my number two. And if you are using the stainless steel, then a number two should do it, okay? Use the number two instead of number three, okay? So if you are using stainless steel tool, number two to trim the surface, the side and the foot. And if I'm using my carbide tool, First, you might want to use the number three to remove the most of the clay. And also, you could uh, give yourself an idea where roughly you want to have your foot ring. Um, you can use the tip of a tool to make a mark. 
So this will be roughly the outer part of the, the foot for rim, and then this will be the inner part. So keep yourself at the guideline where is your foot going to be. And then after that, you can just go ahead and remove the clay in the center and also the clay, the extra clay from the outer part. Right, so I'm using my number three first to cut. And I'm bracing okay, this tool, you know, when you're trimming, you want to stabilize your blade. Okay, so actually, I am extending my thumb and kind of holding the tool closer to the corner and then I brace the uh, the, the corner here on my uh, left thumb. Right, so I am taking the clay to the edge of the furin, the outer part. And for the inner part, I'm just going to dig it I'm using the corner here to stop to move to dig the clay from the center. So this is the center. I'm holding the tool kind of like the 90 degrees is right there. Okay, this is L shape. The 90 degrees is right there. And then once I dig in, I am starting to move the tool this way. Okay, so dig in first and then start to move this way. And again, holding the uh, tool very steady and very firmly. Right, so that, this is the first cut. And then do it one more time. Okay, second top cut. Right, so this is my third cut. And now, we already checked the uh, thick, thickness of the bottom is 15. And now I wanna make sure that this part is within like three to four millimeter, actually three, okay? So meaning I could go 12 deep. And now I'm gonna bring back my ruler here. Right, so now I have about uh, seven, okay. So I have five more to go. Okay, check it again. Now I have come up to 10, so I have two more to go. more to go. Um, at this stage I will change my tool into uh, uh, number two okay so that I could take care of the corner a bit better because the number two has a nice 90 degrees there so I will use number two. Right to the uh, final check-in to see if I got it right. Right, so it's about uh, about right. Okay. 
so I'm leaving this part here around uh, three to four millimeters. So I will just clean it up, make sure that the bottom is nice and smooth. Um, sometimes if you uh, trim in this part here, since the inside you have a little curve, actually you, have, you could have a little dome here, meaning the very center point a little bit higher, the outer point a little bit lower. Okay. So this part has been taken care of and uh, I can knock it and let this hear the sound which okay, it's like uh, tapping on the drum so that you can hear the uh, vibration and you can remember this sound and later on when you trim the same size of the ball uh, you don't need to depend on the uh, measuring tool okay, you can just by learning by tapping the sound and then you stop okay so that's how you learn it and then now after you taking care of this part here so you know that the, the ball is following through if you your inside the ball is very nice curve nice and smooth the out, outer part should follow the inside curve so meaning this corner okay from the top uh, camera this corner and the outer corner should be match or even the outer corner should be a little bit lower than the inner corner so that you, you could decide how much clay you can remove from the outside part okay so let me bring back the uh, number three for the general treatment the number three carbide tool And if you find out the tool you are holding, sometimes you find out it's getting chattering, okay, getting chattering, meaning you're holding the uh, the tool at certain angle and the clay start to uh, get vibrate. You have to uh, change the angle of the tool to avoid it if you don't want to have the uh, chattering mark. And if you try to use more of the corner, okay, the corner, the closer, the, the cutting point closer to the corner, the tool is not going to vibrate. Versus if you use the tip, okay, the tip is easy to vibrate. Okay, so using the corner will avoid the unwanted chattering mark. Um, if you find the uh, tool start to get chatter, okay, if you hold like this angle, you got easy to chatter, you, you can change the cutting angle, okay, change the cutting angle, okay. Right, so that how to avoid the uh, unwanted chattering. So now I get it about right, the uh, inside corner and the outside corner is similar level. Okay, the outside could be a little bit lower. And now I'm going to bring back my number two trimming tool again to do the uh, better cutting for the corners. And you see that I'm holding that blade, get my thumb there to stabilize when I'm cutting. And also when I'm using this tool, sometimes if you my thumb is cannot reach there, I am using this part of the finger. So I hold the tool here and this part here is holding on the the side of a on the body of the, the, the surface to stabilize the tool. And 
and then um, I usually like to have a little undercut here using the corner of uh, my number two trimming tool just the corner a little undercut so that when I'm gleasing usually I, I hold the foot and then dip the whole thing in the glaze and if you have a little undercut there it's helping the glaze to stop right there so that corner is very uh, very good for avoid the glaze to go over the foot And sometimes if the foot is uneven, when you are wired it up uh, by accident, you, you, you somehow you didn't uh, make it very even. You could do uh, let, try to level the foot at the very final stage after you, uh, you got everywhere that is nicely done, and then uh, you could level it. And also, I don't like the uh, the, the edge too uh, too sharp, so I usually round the corner. The also the inside corner, outside corner, and inside corner, and then uh, if you try to level the foot. The key for getting that to uh, level is that spin the wheel a little bit faster and uh, you don't want to place your tool right on top of it. Usually, if you, you put the tool right on top of it, you are going to go with the wave. So usually I uh, suggest you go from one side, from outer part or from the inner part, okay. either way, and spin the wheel fast. Right, and then I will bring my uh, burnished rock to uh, compress the foot. And if you uh, care about the service, you could use a uh, rubber rip to also burnish the service a bit. So that's the uh, trimming of the foot, taking care of this part here. And then um, at this stage, I will uh, use my stamp to just stamp on the foot. Okay, uh, people ask me uh, what material are uh, this stamp. I have a uh, for the square one, I have three different sizes. Very small one for the little cups and the medium one for the balls for step on the foot. And the larger one, uh, it's usually you want to step on the larger area. <clears throat> These two are made out of uh, ox horn. And this is from the stone they uh, sandblasted. I have my own design, uh, it's Chinese character, and they sandblasted. Okay, so different materials. And uh, I made it in Taiwan, but you could find it uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, just uh, Google search you know, stamp for pottery, stamp for ceramics. They should pop out and they have uh, different materials too. Rubber or uh, uh, copper or metal, okay. So you can have your own design and have them custom it for you. Okay, so that's a stamp. And now uh, I want to remove the uh, anchoring down clay here. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I don't uh, lose the center. Um, like I told you, I would uh, use this tool. Okay, This is compressing tool. This is the uh, aluminum 
uh, bearing okay, they can spin in two different directions and uh, make sure that uh, some people when they bite it they try to separate no uh, you cannot separate it okay it's bounded together it's just they spinning in two different directions so when you are holding down the uh, the, the, the spinner I call this spinner or bearing you hold it down okay actually this part is not moving the top part is not moving the bottom portion the bottom one is moving with the disc so that you don't create any friction there so you just hold it down that's all okay um, my special design for this is that uh, there is a glue there so the uh, the bearing the spinner is just dropping in, in there and fitting nicely in there okay so that's my design and also the uh, circular you can it's easier for you to find put the uh, spinner in the center okay the circular is matching the cir circle of your foot so it will be easy to find the center okay so once you have your this in the center and place that, so you hold it down and you have a down pressure. So when you are trimming, when you are holding down your piece, the piece is not going to move. So it's easier for you to take care of your ball all the way down to the corner. Okay. Some people do like to uh, trim it down to the corner. Some people just trim here, okay, trim this part here. But I like to uh, follow the, the curve all the way through to the rim, from the rim to the foot. So I usually do trim into up to the rim here. So now I could uh, remove the uh, anchoring clay while I'm pushing it down. Okay, so now just push it down. You can do that, you can do that. Just hold it on, not on the disc, or not on the disc, on the spinner, okay, on the bearing here. You just hold it down and then uh, you can trim it all the way to the rim. So the curve is following through from here all the way to the rim. Okay, so that's the function of uh, this spinner and the uh, plastic glass. So that's the curve follow through from there to the rim. Um, the clay here, you could just use sponge to smooth it, smooth the rim. If you have porcelain, okay. If you have a stoneware and uh, it's very grubby, try not to use the uh, sponge. You could use a chamois to, okay, the chamois to do that. So you wet your chamois and then you do that. So that's the uh, trimming. Um, I told you that I want to show you after trim, what is the weight. Right, so it's about a pound and uh, three ounce. So meaning I remove uh, about uh, 13 ounces of it. Okay, one pound and three ounces. And it was two pounds. Okay, so it's about 13 ounces. 
And of course, if you want to make it thinner, you can keep on uh, trimming it very remotely. As long as you have very, uh, very uh, straight, very uniform wall, you should be able to make it even thinner. But uh, I don't want, I don't want to get it too thin because uh, I will also want the ball to be durable. Okay, durable, so not too thin. And once it's dry, the fire is it will be thinner. Okay, so that's the uh, demonstration on trimming this three uh, six inches white ball and two pound of a clay. All right, so I hope this helped and uh, see you next time.